So today we will talk about quantum multi-collisions. Um, in this talk, we will focus on compressing function, which is a function h with domain t to the m and range t to the n. Well, the domain is larger than the range. Um, and there's a well-known problem. It's called collision finding or two collision finding, which is to find distinct input x1 and x2. They map to the different. Uh, they map to the same output. Uh, uh, there are a lot of crypto problems that are based on this uh, problem is hard. For example, hash functions and also all the applications of hash functions. And now, um, in our, our work, we focus on k-collision finding. This is a generalization of two-collision finding problem, which is to find distinct x1 to sk. They map to the same value. There are a lot of applications which require k-collision resistance. For example, building micropayment system, MicroMint, using four collision resistance. And also, it's important to analyze the probability of finding multi-collisions in different hash functions. And recently, um, when we consider k as a polynomial of n, it is um, uh, the k-collision finding problem usually will uh, give you more power. You can build uh, more. Uh, you can uh, build more applications from k-collision uh, collision resistant when k is a polynomial. For example, you can remove keyed hash functions. So it is always easy to see that k-collision finding is harder than two-collision finding because k-collision is always a two-collision. Um, so the purpose of our work is to understand the actual difficulty of finding k collision by a quantum computer. So uh, in our uh, work, we only consider the number of queries. So this is a classical query complexity. We have a classical uh, computer A and a Oracle H. The classical computer A has unlimited computational power, and also it is allowed to make Oracle query to the Oracle H. And the complexity is the number of query made by A. In a quantum setting, we have a quantum machine, which is A, and also a quantum, a quantum Oracle H. A is allowed to make quantum query, and also it has unlimited computational power as a quantum computer. And the, num and the query complexity is basically the number of query made by A. There are several reasons we're interested in this model. So first, the quantum, com uh, the quantum query complexity is interesting on its own. And also, the proof techniques are usually helpful for other areas. And also, um, for a well-designed hash function in this classical setting, the best attack is usually similar to generic attack. So in a classical setting, um, it's actually capture the complexity of the hash function. So we hope like there's some similar things happen in quantum. Okay, so here are some results for two collision finding. Um, the upper bound uh, for two collision finding is two to the n over three. The upper bound is um, an algorithm works for arbitrary function as long as m is greater than m plus one, which means there are a lot of collisions in the function just like a two-to-one function. So uh, let's look at the lower bound, which is tight. It's also two to the n over three. Uh, the lower bound is proven under random functions and random oracles. And, <clears throat> and here's the results for k-collision finding. There's the upper bound for k-collision finding, uh, which was shown in Asia Crip 2017 by Hoso Yamada, Sasaki, and Kusagama. So the, uh, this is a complexity, and we see that when k is, a, when k is two, for two collision setting, it is tight. And for k is greater than two, uh, the coefficient between n is um, exponentially clo uh, close to half when k grows. And for lower bound, uh, we don't know any non-trivial lower bound for k is greater than two. So um, this is the previous results. And this is our results for upper bound. Um, we improve the upper bound to this uh, term. Well, for k equals to 2, it is still tight. And for k is greater than 2, it is better. But it is still exponentially close to half when k grows. 
Okay, note that this uh, results was also independently discovered by HSTX 18 and also presented in Asia Crip 17 from session. Okay. So let's look out look at the lower bound. Um, for uh, for many problems um, with the risk, sorry. Yeah, so let's look at the lower bound. So it's, uh, really, ne it's really natural to ask the question um, if this exponential term is actually necessary, or is there any way like we can uh, actually lower the upper bound so that it's maybe polynomially close to half or even linearly close to half when k grows. And also, we have more evidence about it. So this is called reciprocal plus one rule. Actually, for a lot of problems respect to a random function or random oracle, uh, let n to be 2 to the n, which is a search space size. Um, if the classical query complexity is n to the 1 over alpha, then usually their quantum query complexity is n to the 1 over alpha plus 1. So for example, for database search, um, we have, uh, uh, in the classical setting, we have uh, n queries. In a quantum setting, we have Grover search with square root of n. We have 1 plus 1 is 2. It's uh, follow the rule. For two collision finding, we have birthday paradox in the classical setting, which is square root of n. And we have BHT algorithm, which we will explain later. This is um, n, uh, the cube root of n. We have 2 plus 1 is 3. For a case some problem, this is a problem of a generalization of database search and two collision finding. Uh, this is uh, to find distinct k inputs such that their f of x sum up to zero. So in the classical setting, we have the query complexity is n to the 1 over k, and in the quantum, it is n to the 1 over k plus 1. Still follow the rule. And the last problem is oracle interrogation. The problem is to like, allow you to make Q queries, and your task is to find Q plus 1 valid input and output pairs. So classically, um, the, problem is, the probability is always 1 over n, whatever how many queries you made. So to make this probability, like we can never make this probability to be a constant. In other words, we can say this problem has complexity infinite, or n to the 1 minus 1 over 0. In the quantum setting, the probability is around q over n when you make q queries. So to make this probability constant, the query number is about n. So we have 0 plus 1 is 1. Still follow the rule. So it's natural to ask the question, maybe the lower bound for k collision also satisfy the same rule. So this is the lower bound for classical k collision finding, which is n to the 1 minus uh, 1 over k. By doing some simple math, we have alpha is k over k minus 1, or 1, minus, uh, uh, 1 over alpha plus 1 is k minus 1 over 2k minus 1. So this quantity is linearly approached to half when k grows. So we have our conjectured lower bound, which is this. Um, and we indeed tried hard to um, lower our upper bound, trying to match our upper bound to the lower bound, we conjectured. But however, we finally found that the upper bound is tight. So, um, so uh, we will show that the, the, uh, the lower bound matches the upper bound, and this result is the first non-trivial lower bound for any k is greater than 2. Here, k is a constant, and the bound is tight. OK, so let's look at the upper bound. So uh, let's record the BHT algorithm for a two collision. So first implicitly, this function is a 2 to 1 function. So the first step is to construct a database of R entries. So the algorithm basically just make R different, uh, R random classical query to construct a database and uh, construct such a database of entry xi and h of xi. This is the first step. And then 
the adversary define the function f over other input x. So f of x is 1 if and only if x with some entry in the database form a two collision. Otherwise, it's 0. So basically, if you can find an x such that f of x is 1, it, we find a collision. So we can use Grover's to find a collision. And the total number of query is r plus square root of 2 to the n over r. Well, the first term comes from preparing the database. The second term comes from Grover search. Well, 2 to the end is the size of the search space, and r is the number of solutions in the, uh, in the space. So by optimizing this formula, we have the complexity is 2 to the n over 3, which is optimum. So let's generalize the ideal 2k collision. So assume we have a database d k minus 1 containing a lot of k minus 1 collision. And we want to construct a database containing some k collisions. The idea is the same. We define a function f, which is also defined over all the uh, input. And f of x is 1 if and only if f with some k minus 1 entry in the previous database form a k collision. Otherwise, it is 0. So if we want to construct a database of size rk, we can just simply apply Grover search rk times. And each Grover search costs us square root of 2 to the n over rk minus 1 queries. So this is how we do uh, quick collision. First, we construct a database d1 containing only input and output pairs, and construct d2 containing two collisions, and so on, until we have a database dk, which should contain at least one k collision. And uh, this is the uh, total number of queries per, uh, by each parameter r1 to rk. And we have the constraint that r0 is 2 to the n, and rk is, should be at least 1. And by optimizing the formula, we have the upper bound. And this gives an, our uh, algorithm for any k to 1 function. And also, actually, it works for arbitrary function as long as the domain is at least k times of the range. OK, so let's talk about lower bound. In the classical setting, we use lazy sampling to do lower bound. In this setting, instead of having a random function on the right side, we have a simulator uh, to simulate the random function on the fly. Okay, so here's how we do it. Um, when A makes a query, um, the simulator just search the database for that query. If x is in the database, let's see, there's an entry x, h in the database. The simulator just return h. If it is not in the database, the simulator just draw uniformly at random h and uh, insert x of h in the database and return h. And it's easy to see that the behavior of a simulator or a random function h are identical from a's view. So by making Q queries, this is a picture we have. Um, we have a database of size at most Q. And we know that the classical adversary only has the information in the database. So the probability of A outputs a collision is at most. The probability of D contains a collision, plus some negligible probability, which comes from just random guess. So the probability is bounded by this formula. Well, i minus 1 over 2 to the n is the, number of, uh, is the probability of having a collision at step i. So which gives us q squared over 2 to the n, which is the um, lower bound that we want. OK. So the question is, how can we do quantum lazy sampling? The problem is, even if a single quantum query looks like the following, so even single quantum query should define the database everywhere instead of just define the database at a single point. So thanks to uh, Mark Zendry's recent work, we have a technique called Compressed Oracle. He shows a way to do quantum lazy sampling. Here is the very informal idea of his work. So by looking at the Oracle in the Fourier basis, we can abstract the operation of the Oracle um, by the following things. 
And also, we can make sure, uh, and, and we are sure that uh, they're identical from the quantum adversary's view. So basically, the simulator maintains a superposition of the database instead of just a single database. And for every uh, query x and u, and also for, a super, and for any d, the simulator simulates the database just similar to what the simulator do in the classical setting. So let's just focus on a single pair of query x and u, and a single database. So this is a very informal idea. So when, x, uh, when the adversary makes a query x and u to the simulator, the simulator basically doing the same thing. It just search x in the database. If x and h is in the database, the adversary, uh, the simulator updates the output register from u to u plus h. If it's not in the database, uh, S inserts X and the random H into the database and updates the output register. So this is what the math looks like. So um, we have database which containing input and output pairs. And second, for every quantum query, it will increase every database by size at most one. In other words, the size of the database is bounded by the number of queries. And if x is in the database, then h of x is defined by the database, which is d of x. Otherwise, it's completely random. Here's a theorem from uh, Mark's work. Uh, it said that the quantum adversary only has information in the database. Again, this is a very informal statement. But it tells us how to do two collision lower bound. So to bound the probability of having a two collision, which means we do a measurement over the adversary's register and find a two collision. So the probability of finding a two collision in the adversary or the algorithm's register is bounded by the probability of D containing a two collision. So now our task becomes to bound the probability of D containing a collision. And given D of no collision, adding an input and a random output pair to the database with probability at most D over 2 to the n, it contains a two collision. And we know that the size of the, the database is bounded by the number of queries. So after the i query, the square root of the probability only increases by square root of i minus 1 divided by 2 to the n. So the total, the total square root of the probability is bounded by this formula. And by solving the formula, it gives us the right lower bound for two collision finding problem. And this is a comparison of what happens in the classical setting and what happens in the quantum setting. So when we make uh, Q queries, in the classical setting, we have a, data, a single database with at most Q entries. And this is the formula of counting the total number of probabilities. In the quantum setting, we have a quantum adversary, a quantum simulator, and also a superposition of the database. But for every possible database with non-zero with non weight, there are at most Q entries in the database. And the square root of the probability is bounded by this formula. OK, so uh, let's briefly talk about how to extend the idea to three collisions and even to any constant collisions. So let T1 to be the time to have one collision in the database, which we have already proved. And let T2 to be the time we have two collisions in the database. And also, we can define TK to be the time to have exactly K2 collision. However, um, it's a little bit informal because it's still possible to have K collisions just after, three, just after K queries. So we solve the equation, and we know the formula of TK. So let's just, just assume the database contains exactly K2 collision between the query TK minus 1 and TK. 
So still we have, we can bound the probability of the continuous recollision. So if a database contain no three collision, but exactly K2 collision, by adding a random input output pair, X and H, to the database with probability at most K divided by 2 to the N, where K is the number of two collisions, we will have a, collision, we will have a three collision. So the, uh, the formula for the square root of the probability is the following, where uh, the square root of J over 2 to the N comes from um, uh, the increment in, in the square root of the probability, and tj minus tj minus 1 is the number of steps the database contain exactly j2 collisions. So this is the formula for uh, three collisions. And by solving this formula we have, uh, we need around 2 to the n over 7, two collisions to have one three collision. So by solving tk, and we know k is 2 to the n over, three, uh, over 7. We solve that tk is 2 to the uh, 3n over 7, which is the lower bound we want. OK, so let's uh, compare what happened in the classic and the quantum setting. So the first difference is the time tk prime and tk, where well, the difference comes from the square root uh, in the probability. And also, for the second formula, the difference also comes from the fact of quantum computation. Well, in the classical setting, we have the probability, but in the quantum setting, we have the square root of the probability. OK. So in the talk, we had almost all the uh, details. Um, if you are interested, you can find more details on Compressed Oracle from Mark's work, and also you will find more details about how to extend above the pr above proof ideal to any constant k, and also like more details about how to formalize the proof in our work. So it's uh, welcome to read the paper. Thank you. Any questions from the audience? Hello, hello. Uh, can you explain a little more about lower bound? So, what happened to the database if you uh, query to a superposition of inputs? So, how does that only add the size of a uh, database by one? Um, you mean, uh, so the question is uh, like, why the database is only increased by one? Okay. Um, so, um, let me see if anything is for here. Um, yes, yeah, so actually, so uh, uh, again, we have the problem here. Where is it? Um, sorry. Yes, so this is the problem we have. So a single quantum query defines a database everywhere. But when we use a superposition of the database, we will realize that um, even this, uh, even sing like a single quantum query, uh, and you have a superposition of the database. By making a query, your database will um, so each uh, component of this query will con contribute to the database by one. So they are not simultaneously compute, uh, contribute to the database at the same time. Um, that's the very brief idea about like how it works. Okay. Okay. Um, any question? Let's thank the speaker again.